All right, we're live. This is That's What He Said. We are day 66. That's kind of hard to believe. We've been at this every day since the beginning of the year, and I am back up for this week. So uh, I always love hitting go without knowing what I'm going to say and kind of just seeing what comes out. Usually turns out okay. Uh, so yeah, this is day 66. If you are following along, we are on page 435 of the Science of Mind book by Ernest Holmes, the founder of Religious Science, Science of Mind, uh, Centers for Spiritual Living, is what we are called now, uh, or at least this specific organization. But what I, uh, really the point is, um, A, follow along if you're not following along. We are making our way through this fantastic book in a year, which no one would actually read on their own all the way through. And we have this fun little chart that we can... Uh, it jumps around but gets you through the whole book by the end of the year. Uh, so that's the first. Second, Holmes talks about Jesus. Fair warning, fair transparency. Holmes talks about Jesus a lot. A lot. And, uh, you know, I think we like to pretend that we're like not this Christian thing because a lot of people uh, have been burned from some traditional Christian views and are trying to look for something uh, to step out of that and heal some of that. But man, does Jesus come up a lot in this book, especially in this section, because it's from the teachings of Jesus. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's get into the reading. This is page 435, paragraph two. Uh, we are in From the Teachings of Jesus is the name of the section. And this is uh, the whole, this whole section is where Holmes talks about the metaphysical principles that Jesus was actually teaching. So um, we can heal our whole thing around the uh, what's taught about Jesus and actually look at some of the things that Jesus may have said. So here we go. Self-healing must come first of all. If we think we can guide our brother aright while our own feet still walk in darkness, we are mistaken. We must first... Damn. <laughs> Right off the bat, got us. That's, a, that's important. That's very important. We must first clarify our own vision. Then we shall become as lights, lighting the way for others. But can we teach a lesson we have not learned? Can we give that which we do not possess? To suppose so is hypocrisy, a thing to be shunned. Jesus tears the mantle of unreality from the shoulders of hypocrisy, winnowing from the soul of sham and shallowness its last shred of illusion. That's a sentence. We cannot see reality, with a capital R, until our eyes are opened, until the light of eternal truth, with a capital T, has struck deeply into our own souls. Scientific prayer. Uh, and he is somehow or another referencing Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. We now come to a definite teaching regarding prayer. We shall receive that for which we ask. It shall be open to us when we knock, and we shall find that for which we are searching. This teaching implies the, def the definiteness of spiritual and mental work. God is intelligent mind and spirit, and there is a direct response from this universal intelligence to our own intelligence. If we ask for bread, we shall not receive a stone, but we are told we must ask believing if we are to receive. Here again, we are meeting the law of cause and effect in the teachings of Jesus. Prayer is a mental as well as a spiritual function of intelligence. It is a certain manner of approach to the spirit, a conscious act of the mind, a concrete experience of the knowing uh, faculty. Prayer should be direct and specific and should always be accompanied by a positive receptivity. God cannot answer prayers which have no meaning. The answer to a prayer is in the prayer when it is uttered or thought. We do not pray aright when we are in opposition to the fundamental harmony. The whole teaching of Jesus relative to prayer is that God will answer when we pray aright. Jesus points to the fact that if we, being human and consequently limited, know how to give good gifts... Oh, cool. I don't know how much of that was just missed because phone uh, is apparently on low battery, so I'm hoping that was recorded because I don't want to go do it again. Uh, 
but I'll go back and check, and I will, I guess, if we need to. So, uh, one last paragraph. God and creation. We are to know the truth by its fruits. The certain estimate of reality is ever evidenced by its worth in actual living. We are not too separate. Uh, we are not to separate life from living, nor God from its creation. One is the cause, the other is the effect. The invisible things of God are manifested through the visible, and unless the invisible thought and desire of humans is in line with the truth with a capital T, our acts will fall in error. While we are told not to judge, we are clearly warned not to fall under the illusion of accepting the false for the true. Good stuff. Awesome. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're following along or just even watching some of these here at a time and getting something from it. Um, whatever you are getting, it is, it is good. It is good. We are glad you are here. Uh, follow us along. Hit like, share, follow our Instagram, our Facebook, wherever you're watching this. And we will see you tomorrow.